We've been towing our enclosed trailer for 3,000 miles on this trip so far with our truck camper. And I want to share five kind of tips and stuff to pay attention to if you're planning on towing, and especially with a truck camper. And if you're an old time truck towing person, maybe you can post any additional comments or feedback down below for other people. That would be great. The five things we want to take a look at was fuel mileage, parking, driving, weight and also maintenance and at the end we'll share our overall thoughts about the towing experience that we've had so far let's get rolling fuel mileage is a very important consideration when towing because it will determine how far you can go your range and your range is really determined on your fuel mileage and how much fuel you're carrying for us we have a 55 total fuel capacity with the truck and if we're getting 10 miles per gallon that gives us 550 miles of total range now the interesting thing with towing a trailer is a trailer really cuts down on fuel mileage for a couple different reasons one is for wind drag and especially an enclosed trailer like this it's really tall it's just under 10 foot tall and then second is you're having an extra four tires so the rolling resistance and the overall weight of the trailer added to the truck. Now the interesting thing we found is that when we bought the trailer completely empty and had the truck completely empty, we towed it across country, we got eight to 10 miles per gallon. And then we put the truck camper on it, fully loaded, loaded the, the enclosed trailer and towed it back across country on this trip and we're getting eight to 10 miles per gallon. So it's interesting that the truck camper really doesn't decrease the fuel mileage and really even all the extra weight that we're carrying doesn't really change the fuel mileage much. It's obviously not real good, but it's nice that the fuel mileage stays relatively the same. Now, when we just have the truck camper and truck without towing, we typically get 10 to 12 miles per gallon. So our overall loss with towing the trailer on this trip has been approximately two miles per gallon, you know, and it varies depending on the terrain. The second factor to consider is parking. Obviously the total length of our setup is exceedingly extended from what it originally was. Now our enclosed trailer is a 14 foot enclosed trailer that the overall length is about 18 foot on it with the hitch. Our truck is a shorty full size. And I think with the bumpers, we're just under 21 foot, meaning that our total length is just shy of 40 foot. Now, 40 foot is a really nice number to stay underneath because you can actually park in two parking spaces. You just have to find an, uh, two adjacent parking spaces and pull through. If you're longer than 40 foot, that's where it becomes a lot bigger hassle for parking. And that's something to consider if you're thinking about pulling a trailer is how long your overall length is gonna be because that's gonna make parking much more difficult, especially if you're in town or resupplying, things like that. The second thing to consider is the width. Now our trailer is a seven foot wide box, but then the tires and wheel wells stick out past that. So they, they're out almost 10 inches, 12 inches or so from the side of the trailer, meaning that our overall width is about two foot wider than the truck. So when it comes to parallel parking, it's a bit more tricky in the city because you basically have the truck sitting out from the curb almost an extra foot and those back tires on the trailer are almost touching the curb. So it's just a little bit something more to consider with towing is parallel parking, parking in the city. Now, if you're really fortunate and you have the actual tire width match your truck, that's gonna make it much e more easy. And if you can keep that length under 40 foot, that's gonna make it a much more enjoyable experience. The third consideration is driving experience with a trailer and on road, on interstates, it's really not a big deal because the lanes are so wide. Realistically, it's in the air flow of the draft of the truck camper. And even with a tall trailer, it just kind of flies behind in the slipstream. Not a big deal. You do feel it a bit on the hills that you got some weight back there. It slows you down a bit, but not a huge thing. Now, when you get up in the mountain roads where they're a lot narrower, winding, potholes, that sort of thing, it gets a little more hairy with the trailer because you're constantly having to pay attention and those outside tires, because of the width, are right close to both the, the outside edge and the center dividing lane. So it's definitely not 
as enjoyable to tow a trailer in those type of situations. Off-road is probably the other consideration that is a major downside with having a trailer. It slows us down immensely. We were driving to this campground here and it has a bunch of potholes. We would drive our truck through 20 miles an hour, no big deal. Could even drive faster, but don't wanna make a whole bunch of dust. With the trailer, we're barely going five miles an hour, just kind of trying to limit how much uh, potholes we hit with the thing. So a lot less enjoyable off-road, much slower pace, not a huge fan of that. The other factor we've seen with exploring is that it's much more difficult with the trailer. Typically we would just head down any road and when we find a gate or it's blocked or a tree's down, we can easily just turn around, drive right back out. With a trailer, it makes you a lot more thoughtful where you wanna go because you have to be thinking the whole time, can I back, back up this whole road and what is my escape plan? Trailers work really well if you know where you're headed and you've got a base camp, that's an ideal situation. Now, when we were looking for campgrounds, a couple different campsites a couple times, we took the trailer out and we had it up on a couple wheels, a couple times where uh, the front axle would be touching, the back wouldn't. We drug the hitch a bit uh, on some of the oh steeper my, climbs. two wheels off the ground. I can see all of it. Okay, there we go. Now we've got the wheels back on the ground. Ooh, we're gonna touch just a little bit on the back end. As you can see, it's a little bit more interesting. When we were camped out of the top of a mountain for a four wheel drive trail, we came down and there was a crazy sketchy section of road that had been rutted and washed out. We'll show you a little bit of video clip of that. It's a lot more difficult with the trailer and it takes a lot more consideration when you're driving off-road and when you're out exploring. It kind of puts a big damper in it if you're not used to towing with a trailer. Now, one of the things we found on really technical terrain, like with that washed out road section, was that to stay out of the ruts and get the trailer tracking where we wanted to on the hill is actually turned the brake controller completely off so the trailer brakes weren't engaging and kind of causing the trailer to slide sideways. So little tips and tricks like that can go a long ways if you're gonna push the limit a little bit with your trailer towing. Now, obviously this is a big trailer, so we're limited to how far we can go off-road, but it's definitely a consideration is the driving experience. Okay, it's climbing out of the rut. There you go. All right. It's sliding right now. Ooh, that was scary. That was a really big hole. All right, you're climbing out of the rut again. You're sliding into the rut, honey. You're in the rut. Unfortunately, we fell in the rut. Oh no, honey, that's not good. Uh, the trailer is pivoting. Okay, we're out of the rut on the wrong side. Sometimes having a trailer is very scary. Oh my. The angle is quite intimidating. Number four, let's look at weight. And weight is a huge factor, and there's a lot of different parts of weight that you have to pay attention to. Now, the first thing is your trailer, whatever it may be, is gonna have a maximum weight rating. So this trailer has a gross vehicle weight rating of 7,000 pounds. It has two axles, each axle can carry 3,500 pounds each. The trailer itself weighs about 2,000 pounds empty, meaning that it can carry about 5,000 pounds of content inside of it. Now on this trip, when we we're hauling, we scaled the back axle and we were just under 5,000 pounds total weight without the hitch. Now that's the next thing to consider is that when you load your trailer, you really should have a hitch scale to see how much load you're putting on that hitch. Typically what you want to try to shoot for is 10% of your total trailer weight as hitch weight. So in this case, if we we're about 5,000 pounds, we'd want to be about 500 pounds on the hitch. Now, the best way to do that is to get a little hydraulic hitch scale and it's a great way to measure your weight on how you're going to load your trailer before you head out on your long trip 
and that way you can ensure that your load is going to be uh, properly distributed and you're going to have the right amount of weight on that hitch. So that takes care of the trailer portion. Now let's look at the truck and how it deals with the weight. For your tow vehicle, especially if you're a truck camper, this is where the weights really need to pay close attention. So the first thing to note is that we put about 450 pounds of tongue weight on our trailer before we left. Now when we hooked it up to our truck, it has the truck camper in the back of it. But what happened was that it transfers some of the load off of the front axle onto the back axle because of that trailer load. So in essence, what happened was we lost about 250 pounds of weight off of the front axle and it transferred to the back axle plus the 450 pounds of the trailer tongue weight. So our total increase was about 700 pounds more on that rear axle. Now that's something that you want to pay really close attention to. The best thing to do is to run your setup across a scale and get each axle weight, your front, your rear, and your trailer, and so you know exactly where you're sitting. It's really helpful to get your weights before you add your trailer and after so you know kind of what's happening with that weight transfer. So once you have all of your scale weights, it's important then to pay attention to your gross axle weight ratings. So your rear axle and your front axle and make sure you're within those numbers. Now that's gonna be important just for longevity, making sure that you're within its mechanical limits not to wear out parts excessively or be in an unsafe situation. If you have modified suspension, it can definitely help with better shocks and so forth to help carry the load. For us, it hauls the trailer absolutely no problem whatsoever, but the suspension was designed specifically around the weights that we'd be carrying. One of the most overlooked issues with towing a trailer and even just with the truck camper is your tires. Now these are the most crucial safety piece of your whole setup and you want to make sure that you know what your weights are specifically so you have the right tires and the right pressures in your tires. Now on our setup we're just under 7,000 pounds on that rear axle which means that our tires need to be able to carry over 3,500 pounds per tire. Now each tire is going to have a weight rating on the tire so you want to check and see what your tires are rated for. Many of the tires that come with your full-size truck are only rated for about 3,100 pounds, meaning that our truck would be too heavy for most tires. The tires that came on here for factory were about 31, 3,200 pounds at their maximum 80 PSI load E range tire. Now this tire is actually a load D tire and it's 50 PSI maximum pressure. Now the PSI is really important to pay attention to depending on how much load you're carrying. So in this case, since we're maxing out or close to maxing out the tire weight capacity, we're gonna run it at the maximum 50 PSI. You can also look at the tire load rating charts and it will show you how much load each tire, depending on the load rating, will require for each different PSI. Now that's gonna be really important because the biggest issue people have with tires is that they run either too low of pressure or too high of pressure and either end of the spectrum can cause catastrophic failure where you see the tires explode and the cars end up in the ditch. You don't want to have that happen and paying attention to your tires is crucial. You also want to be just paying attention to your tire every time you get out and stop just check it around make sure there's nothing in the tire. They all they look good. Pay attention to your tire pressures on your dash if you have built-in TPMS or check your tire pressures certainly before you take each different drive. That's going to be a really crucial safety factor to consider. The final factor to consider is your overall combined weight rating of your truck plus your trailer and just make sure you're within your factory specs for your setup. We're rolling about 16,000 total combined weights between the truck and the trailer it's amazing how fast the weight adds up with these things. So you do want to pay attention to that. A lot of people say, you know, how's the performance with a gas engine? We have the 6.2 liter engine. It's not the diesel. It's not the 7.3 gas Godzilla engine. And it's fine. You know, we have no problem keeping up with traffic, 
pulling hills. Most of the time we keep the revs pretty low on the engine so it's not stressing it too hard and it has no problem pulling the load but we rarely go over 60 or 65 on the highway and we take our time. Now if you're going to really be hammering it then maybe some extra horsepower would uh, be beneficial but you do want to pay attention to your total weight and um, how you're driving your setup because you don't want to drive it too fast or too hard. You do have to stop that weight and turn that weight and safety is a really important consideration. Leave a lot more space than you normally would and pay closer attention to the road conditions and uh, that way it keeps you safe and you can get to your destination in one piece. Maintenance is also another consideration because now you're adding more things to pay attention to along with your truck. Obviously you've got your wiring, your chains, you want to make sure you run your trains crosswise. But it's also a good idea to make sure that you have some spare stuff, such as a spare tire that matches your trailer tires if you possibly get a flat or a blowout. Hopefully you won't have that. Now when we were on our last trip, on our first gravel road to a campsite, we parked and there was a staple that got in one of these tires and we had the opportunity to use our ARB puncture repair kit for it and plug that tire. Um, one of the things we found was that these tires are very thin tires. <laughs> I went to put the plug in and went all the way down to the wheel because I was used to a truck tire where there's a lot more to the sidewall of the tires. But you'll want to be paying attention to the pressure in your tires. So checking the pressure before any long trek is always beneficial. Uh, check it when it's cold, ideally so you can match all the tires. And these tires uh, are going to be uh, picking up stuff along the way. So having a tire repair kit is really beneficial. Air compressor, super helpful because in our case, we were able to repair our trailer tire without taking the tire off, without using our spare, without a tire a trip to the tire shop. And it's been running uh, great for the last 1500 miles or so. So that's, that's something else to consider is just that trailers do require a few more maintenance items. Final thoughts on towing a trailer for us. Number one, I don't like it. <laughs> Mostly because it slows down our travel style. It makes it much harder to go exploring. I'm not a big fan of extra length, extra crap we're carrying with us. However, for this specific trip, we wanted to carry our side by side and go to a bunch of different off-road trails. And that was the main purpose that we were trying to achieve on this trip. And in that case, it works fine, but it is a nuisance and it is a hassle to deal with the trailer. And if you don't have to tow a trailer, I absolutely wouldn't tow a trailer. Most of our trips, we will still be running our truck by itself. However, if we're going to a destination to go off-roading with the trailer uh, or the side-by-side, -side, we'll use the trailer and we'll tow it. And we do it more as a base camp type of situation where you drop the trailer off and go exploring. It's a little bit more of a hassle for sure with the trailer and it works fine. Otherwise, you just have to change your driving style and think ahead more and deal with more of the complications of the trailer. Um, overall, I would say the driving aspect of the truck and trailer that with the camper on there is fine. There, the truck does great. It's nice to have an HD truck where it has plenty of capability to just throw a big old trailer behind you and really not have to think or worry about it too much. And I would say the truck does great. So no complaints with the truck as far as power, performance, braking, any of that stuff. The trailer has trailer brakes. That's super great, works well. And overall, I think our setup is super great for what it's doing for this trip, but our overall style is not so much using a trailer for travel. And I would say that traveling with the trailer is more out of uh, need or essential use rather than just carry around stuff that you don't really need to have. Anyways, those are my thoughts on our experience with towing a trailer with our truck camper. If you guys have anything else you've experienced or problems you've run into, post them down in the comments below so you can uh, kind of share that with other people. That's always helpful. Otherwise, we appreciate you watching. Thanks for giving us a thumbs up on the video. That always helps us out. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.